Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to kind of lock items into your background. Now, there are two ways you can do this. One way is um, downloading um, and then re-uploading your image as a background. Um, this is not my preferred way because it does impact the image quality, but I'll show you quickly how to do that. So I'm going to duplicate this slide. So now I can remove any items that I don't want in the background. So these would be the items that I would want to keep here for, you know, they're not going to be linked. They're not going to change ever. So I'm going to go ahead and click file. And then I'm going to go down to it's blocked. Mm -hmm. file. Oh, it wasn't blocked. Download. And then I'm going to download it. You can download it as a JPEG or a PNG. A PNG image is going to be higher quality, so I'm going to select that one. So now if I go ahead and delete this slide, I'm going to add in a blank slide. And now if I go to background, I can choose my image and pull that. This is my downloads folder here. So that image that I just downloaded, which was the slide, will be here, done. And it actually looks pretty good. The PNG does look pretty good. So that's your one way of doing it. Um, when you do it as a JPEG, it really does look kind of crummy. So if you are going to download your slide as a background and re-upload it, make sure that you're using the PNG. Again, that's a higher quality image. The other way you can do this is by creating a new master slide. So what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to click onto this slide. I'm going to select Control A to select all of the elements that are in my slide right now. Control C to copy. Then I'm going to go to slide. I'm going to go to edit master. And then I'm going to click on this first layout. It really doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to hit Control A, select everything that's here, and then I'm going to, going to delete it. Now I'm going to hit Control V to paste everything that I have, and I'm going to click off. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any elements that I don't want um, in my master. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm removing the ones that I am. So this poster here, um, I'm removing this not because it's something that I don't necessarily that I don't want on other um, versions of my classroom. I'm removing it because it's something that I want live linked. And if it's in my background or if it's in my master slide, it's going to be um, it's not going to be something I can edit. And that means I'm not going to be able to add any links. So anything you want linked cannot be in your master. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this sign because this is going to be relevant for the first week of school and then I'm not going to want it anymore. So I'll delete that. And I'm going to delete my Bitmoji so I have the ability to change um, her pose um, or if I update my Bitmoji, I can put a new version of it in here. So I will delete that. Now I have everything set to go and I can close out. And if I go in to add a new slide, if I click this little drop down arrow, you'll see I have an option to add the slide. So the nice thing about doing it this way is it's nice and quick to add more of these from within your slideshow whenever you're ready to do a new version um, of your classroom. So those are the two ways to lock content in the back of a slide so that it makes it easier for students to view. Um, makes it easier for you to edit as well. And this is something that's applicable to more than just using um, using it in a, in a Bitmoji classroom. You can use this anytime you're trying to block content in the back of a slide. Maybe if, you, if you're doing like an interactive um, worksheet and you want students to be able to edit the worksheet but only edit certain sections of it, you would utilize one of these two methods. Last thing that you're going to want to do once you've created this background for yourself is if you did start with a slide like this where you had elements on it, you're going to go ahead and click on the first element, hold down the control key, and click on the remaining elements. 
you're going to copy or cut them out. And then you're going to go into a slide like this one. So you'll see this is an example of a slide where I'm utilizing my um, master slide here. So none of this stuff is movable, whereas in this slide it is. Okay. And then I'm going to paste Control B. And now I have my elements that I can add links to, that I can move around, that I can replace if I want to. Um, and I can go back and delete this original slide. Okay. So I like to do that sometimes. I like to start um, just designing the whole slide the first time around and then deciding what I want to keep as a permanent part of my slide and what I want to remove. And so then I'll do those steps. I'll um, copy everything into my master, delete what I don't want, um, or make a copy of my slide, delete what I don't want, and download that version. And then I'll go back and I'll add um, a new slide in and I'll transfer all of these little items over. Um, obviously, you don't have to do it that way. You can just focus on what you know is going to be in your background, but I'm just a little indecisive, so that's why I go about it with those extra steps.